Hi guys, it's uh, 5 p.m. Uh, where I am here in central Finland. It's another absolutely beautiful sunny day. And uh, this week uh, we're off to uh, central, uh, well, not to central, but to uh, northeastern Italy to taste a ripasso. What's that all about then, you may well ask. What's a ripasso? Stay tuned and you'll find out almost immediately. But first, let's run that little intro. Yep. Hi, guys. Welcome once again to another edition of a Big On Wine. Indeed, here where I am in central Finland, it's a gorgeous summer, summer's day. The temperature is in the high 20s, I think 27 degrees. And where we're off to, uh, in fact, the temperature is just a couple of degrees warmer. And that's uh, northeastern Italy, the province of Veneto and the beautiful Italian city of Verona. So we're in northeastern Italy. Veneto is the province. The capital, of course, is uh, Venice. But in the west of the province, you find uh, two uh, important uh, things. From our point of view, we find Lake Garda and also the city of Verona, the beautiful uh, city of Verona associated naturally with uh, a whole number of stories, including Shakespeare. And the area between Lake Garda in the west and the city of Verona in the east is dedicated to Valpolicella. And it's Valpolicella that we're going to be dealing with on this particular edition of Big on Wine. Remember, Big on Wine is dedicated to bringing you news, clues, and reviews. Indeed, we try to keep you up to speed about just about everything that's uh, happening in the world of wine. And don't forget, our emphasis is on finding you, the consumer, the very best in terms of quality and price for your enjoyment. Okay, so um, what is my wine of the week? Well, my wine of the week is this one here. Let me lift it up towards the camera and get a focus on it. There we go. The uh, name of the wine in question is Vilalta Valpolicella Ripasso. It's a Superiore, in fact. So Vilalta Valpolicella Ripasso Superiore and the vintage is 2018. And uh, this particular wine comes in where I am in uh, sunny Finland for a price of just under 14 euro a bottle. So I think by uh, the standards that we normally apply to wines of quality from the uh, Valpolicella area, I think we can put this quite uh, certainly in the keenly priced or the budget priced category. Okay, a little bit of backstory to Valpolicella. Valpolicella wines, generally speaking, are, are uh, red wines and uh, based around three uh, big local varieties. And I do stress local varieties here. And these three red varieties are the Corvina Veronese, the Rondinella and the Molinara. And um, uh, Valpolicella as a wine region is probably, uh, in terms of importance, in terms of DOC wines, so Denominazione di Origine Controllata, the good quality wines, it ranks uh, just about second to Chianti. So this is a major wine producing region in Italy that produces some absolutely first class wines, both white and red, but it's the red wines, I think, that we normally associate with the name um, Valpolicella. Valpolicella comes in a variety of forms. It comes in the form of Classico, which is made from uh, grapes, red grapes produced in within the old Valpolicella uh, area, then in the Superiore, which is generally speaking aged for a year or so and uh, has to have a minimum alcohol content. And then we come to the more specialized uh, reds. And the first of these, of course, and perhaps the most famous is the Amarone. And the Amarone is produced from uh, dried red grapes and giving it that tremendous intensity.
quite a bit. But uh, if we, uh, I don't think we can talk about a poor relation, but um, if we uh, take a look at our bottle here, we can see that it has a ripasso on the name here. And that uh, means simply that the uh, standard red wine is repassed or uh, re uh, fermented, if you like, with the uh, partially dried grape skins used in the Amarone process there. So that's how it's done. We get a second fermentation and we got we get, of course, a lot more um, structure and, and flavor and color because it's passed over the a second time over the over the grape skins there. In this wine here, we do have the three um, classic uh, Valpolicella uh, grape varieties, the Corvina, the Molinara, and the Rondinella. We've got, uh, in this particular wine, uh, four grams of residual sugar and 13.5% alcohol. All right, that is the backstory to this particular wine. So I've poured myself a drop of the wine in question. Let's hold it up over here against the white door behind me. There we go. As we can see, the color of the wine in the glass is very, very a deep ruby red. Let's call it that, an intense, deep ruby red. It looks incredibly nice in the glass. So almost from the view of this wine, from the way it looks, I think we can tell that color and flavor are going to be absolutely um, in there in spades in this particular wine. All right, that's the way the wine looks. And of course, the next thing to do is to give it a little sniff and see what we can find. Here we go. Now, <laughs> this is absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, in a live stream, we don't have a chance to um, savor the, uh, the, uh, the aromas of the wine. Uh, I'm the only one who can do that, but I can tell you that the aromas on this wine are beautifully, um, not tremendously heavy, but there is a wonderful perfume of dark berries. So what kind of dark berries? Well, I think probably cherry and blackberry are very much to the fore here. So cherry and blackberry in the nose talking to me, but there's much more than that. There's a degree of spiciness. There's a degree of sweetness also in the nose. If I had to compare it to something, I would say that uh, this is very much akin to our dried fruits or Christmassy, Christmassy fruits um, that uh, also have that kind of little spicy element. So there's a toastiness, there's a spiciness um, to this wine, a very wonderful perfume on this particular ripasso. All right, so that's our um, impressions in the nose. And of course, now uh, the only thing that's left, and of course, perhaps the best of all, is a chance to taste this wonderful wine here. So here we go. This is Valpolicella ripasso, uh, Valpolicella wine uh, refermented over the uh, semi-dried uh, grape skins used for the Amarone production. Here we go. Now that's beautiful. In the mouth, first impressions. This, of course, is a dry wine with just that little touch of softness attached to it. Um, four grams of residual sugar. We'll uh, take care of that, of course. Uh, so just that little touch of softness there. It's a very approachable wine. This is a wine, I think, that someone who doesn't particularly traditionally like red wines would find a very, very uh, become a favorite friend very quickly. So there's just that touch of softness. It's a medium bodied. It's not too heavy uh, at all in the mouth. So this is a very user friendly, if you like, wine from Val Policella. It has some nice toastiness to it, um, spice. Toastiness and spice. Um, the berries involved here in the mouth, 
it's the cherry that is speaking to me and it's in the form not only of cherry flavors but also in terms of a wonderful acidity now a wine containing four grams of residual sugar with that spice sweet spiciness could easily become too kind of soft and flabby but it's the cherry acidity which holds this wine together and makes it a thoroughly good uh, little taster here so it's a juicy number it's the acidity that frames those other flavors very very nicely and you know what in addition to getting the mouth watering that acidity uh, does that indeed the finish on the wine the finish on the wine almost has a kind of coffee chocolatey touch to it so first impressions of the dark berries the softness then comes the cherry acidity bite which beautifully balances the other flavors the sweet spice and in the end that wonderful chocolatey coffee finish mm, very nice indeed all right so i can already hear you asking what are we going to be drinking this with well okay I don't see any uh, objections to um, drinking it purely on its own. It's such an attractive drink. Uh, slightly chilled on a summer afternoon. Why not a glass of the Valpolicella Ripasso? Will go down extremely nicely, I'm sure. But um, if we're looking for food pairings now, what am I going to come up with? Well, this is a wine, I think, which uh, being medium bodied, not too heavy, um, nicely balanced. It'll go with a whole variety of uh, pasta and risotto dishes, maybe a mushroom risotto or something like that. But if we're looking for the perfect pairing, you know, I think it has to be red meat, um, beef stew, um, ossobuco, lamb, lamb stew, something like that. Uh, or why not go for a game dish uh, this would be perfect with uh, venison or uh, elk, for example. And of course, your hard salty cheeses, uh, you know, dig out a, a chunk of Parmesan and uh, a glass of the Ripasso and you will be extremely well served. Serving temperature? Well, there are different opinions uh, about uh, this. Um, I think possibly the more expensive and the heavier the uh, Valpolicella, if we're thinking of an Amarone, probably it's closer to 18 degrees, but I would err on the side of coolness. I would be thinking 16 degrees would be the ideal serving temperature, maybe even a degree or two cooler, uh, in my opinion, would be a good thing. So, all right, let's bring you now the heads up on this particular number. Um, Villa Alta Valpolicella Ripasso 2018 Superiore. So this is the uh, slightly upmarket version of the Valpolicella and the Ripasso technique on the top, of course. It's a keenly priced number, this, where I am un just under 14 euro, a bottle probably less expensive if you're in other parts of the world or indeed of Europe. In many respects, it's a baby Amarone. It has the same features. It's dark, it's spicy, uh, slightly soft, uh, but offers bags of cherry acidity and that kind of coffee, chocolatey acidity finish to finish with. Perfect, you know, with your osso buco, your um, your uh, beef stews, etc. A chunk of uh, hard salty cheese. Very, very hard to beat. The difference between Amarone and this particular wine, of course, probably about twenty euro a bottle. So this is a budget quality option from uh, Casa Girelli here, Villalta Valpolicella Ripasso. And um, yes, what am I going to give this in terms of uh, stars out of five? Now, there's a very, very, very good question. I think the uh, optimum uh, star award for this particular wine has to be without any doubt whatsoever, 
four stars out of five. Four stars out of five for Villalta Valpolicella Ripasso 2018. <laughs> Okay, wine lovers, that was my wine of the week for this week, uh, all the way from uh, Valpolicella, the area, the beautiful area between Lake Garda and the city of Verona in uh, northeastern Italy. If you get a chance to visit this particular corner of the world once the pandemic has subsided, please go ahead and do so. Uh, there are some wonderful uh, sights and some wonderful uh, sounds and some wonderful flavours to be tried in this particular area of Italy. That was my wine of the week for this week. I'll be back again next week, of course, with another great wine of the week for you. Let's hope the weather keeps on going. It's been like 25 to 32 or 33 degrees here in central Finland for about six weeks now. But hey, who's complaining at that? Remember, as good viewers uh, of this channel, Please do all the things that good viewers do. Please uh, drop a comment down below if you feel that way inclined. We're always very happy to receive your comments and to reply to them. Share the video around to your heart's content. And, of course, give us a like. Give us a big thumbs up. And remember, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. Enjoy your wines. See you again next week.